is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackwitz, this is The Caged Review, and I am going to review Smackdown Live for July 3rd, 2018. And, um, I said in my last review when I was talking about Raw, the WWE has just lost it. They've lost a lot of actual talent and replaced it with guys and girls that just don't know what the fuck they're doing in the ring. Um, there's so many people now that everything is mistimed. They're out of place. They don't know what they're doing. They can't pull off really technical moves like a lot of the old school wrestlers can. There are a lot of cute faces in there that are just there because they're cute fucking faces and they really offer nothing to the business. They have zero personality and can't perform in the ring. The writing has gone completely downhill. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You cannot go back uh, 15 years and tell me that the product is just as good. It has gone downhill considerably. And of course, um, you know, they, they do a lot of things wrong. I'm saying all this because SmackDown, I think right now, is actually the highlight of WWE um, as far as like their main programming goes. And uh, Raw has just completely lost it. But there are times when I actually enjoy SmackDown. Uh, they have a couple of terrific performers and a couple of people that have great personality. Um, and then there are people who I can't stand in I, I don't get why they're even wrestling to begin with on a main show. Because honestly, talking about going back 15 years, there's some people that are on the main show and even champions right now that would have never been on the main roster 15 years ago. And that's a fact. So, like I said, we're talking SmackDown Live. July 3rd starts off with Renee interviewing Team Hell No. And, uh... They start with kind of where they left off five years ago, like Daniel Bryan and Kane kind of getting along, but kind of not getting along, uh, trying to be funny with it, and it, it kind of worked last time, kind of didn't work last time, and I think it's honestly kind of the same thing this time. Um, you know, I, I really like D Daniel Bryan, and he can cut a good, passionate promo. He can get a good promo that you know, comes from his gut, from his emotions. I think when he's trying to be a comic style promo, it it doesn't work for me, honestly. And honestly, the same with Kane. Um, there can be times when they're funny. There are times when it just doesn't fit right. Um, but it was not a bad promo. It wasn't terrible. They're, like I said, kind of getting along, kind of not. Renee asked him about their opportunity for the belts. Usos interrupt, saying that they just came back as a tag team after five years. They don't deserve a shot. Uh, Paige says that the Team Hell No match at Extreme Rules for the belts still stands. They're facing the Bludgeon Brothers. But if the Usos feel a certain way, then the Team Hell No can prove themselves facing the Usos later. So we know we have... Daniel Bryan and Kane versus the Usos later in the night, which is cool with me. Um, then you get a Jeff Hardy promo, and this is, of course, right the day before the 4th of July, so he's a U.S. champion. He's got this really cool red, white, and blue uh, face paint on. Has this pretty cool promo about the Open Challenge. And I gotta say, I've said before, I really like the fact that they're using Jeff Hardy uh, they're utilizing him uh, both as a champion and as a push. I really appreciate that. Jeff Hardy is one of the guys from the Attitude Era that's still hanging around and 40-something years old. And um, it's impressive. It really is. So come back from commercial break. Asuka's cutting a quick promo about Ellsworth. And honestly, I have to say there was one part where she said something and I had no idea what she said. I don't know if it was in English or Japanese, but it just lost me. And I've said from the beginning, I feel like if anything, that's going to be the downfall for Asuka and Nakamura, is just getting over with the American crowd having such a very thick accent. Um, it is kind of detrimental because you have to get over and connect with the crowd. And um, let's face it, us as Americans, if they don't sound like us, we can't relate. Um, 
That's a sad fact, but it's a fact. After that, you get the U.S. Open Challenge from Jeff Hardy. He's in the ring. Miz answers the call. A uh, decent match for what it was. Miz is not the greatest worker, uh, but not terrible either. He's, he's not terrible. He's, he's um, I don't want to say solid, but he's, he's like a constant. He's constantly good enough to get by. Um, and that's what it is. Uh, he's good enough to get by, and he does. And so the match um, was not exceptional, was not terrible. Jeff Hardy uh, gets a very hard fought win off of this one. It was a pretty long match too. It, uh, it went through at least two, or if not three commercial breaks. Um, took up most of the first hour for sure. And uh, so it was a good way to kick it off. And Jeff Hardy comes away with a win. Then you get a stupid ass James Ellsworth promo. Um, I understand that he's like the guy that people want to cheer because he doesn't look like everybody else. You know, he proves that anybody could truly be a WWE superstar, I guess. Um, but I think that's kind of the point of having Ellsworth there in the first place, to be quite frank, is it's WWE's opportunity to have another human fucking public service announcement walking around. And, uh, I'm so sick of that shit. I'll be honest. Um... WWE, everything is a PSA now, and it it just sucks. It does. Um, you know, wrestling used to have an edge. Um, the PG shit was one thing, but now it's just politically correct all over the board, and it just sucks. So, yeah, enough of that PSA shit. Um, then Byron Saxton is in the ring. Uh, talking about the New Day going to have a pancake eating contest for the 4th of July. Don't know how that connects, but whatever. So the New Day come out, and you got red, white, and blue pancakes, dyed pancakes. And they start eating, then Sanity's music hits. Sanity comes in the ring from behind and does number on New Day, and that was that bit. It started out stupid and did a little bit better. Asuka versus Ellsworth. This was predictable and boring. Asuka, you know she's going to dominate Ellsworth, you know Carmella's going to get involved, you know there's going to be a disqualification, and that's where it was. Carmella gets involved, Asuka gets the win on a DQ, and both Ellsworth and Carmella run out of the ring before Asuka could do anything. Predictable, boring, stupid waste of talent. Carmella is pointless as a champion. She does not deserve a championship. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. She is not good in the ring. She is a very childish character. I just cannot stand her as a character. As a fan, I want to be have a champion that can put on a decent match. As a fan, I want a character that is not stupid, childish, and so underdeveloped that you have to go for the cheap heel heat just by being annoying all the time. It's lazy at it, lazy writing at its best. So as a fan, I cannot stand this kind of shit. I just can't. This is one of the reasons why WWE has gone so far downhill. Sorry, but it's the truth. Um, after that, AJ Styles versus Aiden English. Again, this is predictable. You have AJ versus Aiden English. And actually, the match itself was not bad. Um... Aiden English really held his own in there this time, which was cool, but it's exactly what you expected. AJ is going to pin English. Rusev is going to grab AJ. Rusev is going to make a statement, and there you go. Backstage, you get some stupid-ass iPhone promo from the Iconics. Uh, apparently, Peyton Royce is taking on Becky Lynch. I could care less. I love Becky Lynch, but I can't stand the Iconics. So, yeah. Uh, you cut to commercial, come back, backstage with Carmella and Ellsworth. They're walking. Paige interrupts, says that next week, Ellsworth is going to take on Asuka again, this time in a lumberjack match. I, I don't care. Then you get Becky Lynch versus Peyton Royce, which was not... 
too terrible. Peyton Royce, you can see, is at least trying to become a wrestler. She's not a wrestler yet, but she is trying to become a wrestler. You can see that in some of the shit that she does in the ring. She tries. She's got some moves. Um, the other side of that is there were a couple of spots here where she was definitely out of place. Um, but to be fair, there was actually a spot here where Becky Lynch was uh, trying to throw a gut kick and missed completely and wound up hitting her like in the thigh, in the mid-thigh area. So, a um, few missed spots, but not a terrible match. Becky Lynch finally pulls out the win, though, and it is what it is. Then you got a Shinsuke Nakamura iPhone promo. He is not back yet from being bit by the dog. If you don't know, um, they, they had the bomb-sniffing dogs to check out the arenas, and um, Shinsuke Nakamura was there when they were doing that, and one of the dogs bit him, and he hasn't been back in two weeks. So that was that. And then you finally get the last match of the night, which is Team Hell No versus the Usos. Team Hell No, first time they've been in the ring together in like five years or something. So that was the buildup they were trying to make with that. And a uh, pretty good match overall. I liked it. Um, really cool spots there with uh, Daniel Bryan having one of the Usos in the uh, like surfboard rack. Pretty cool. Uh, Team Hell No, of course, comes up with the win. And there you go. And that was the end of the show. So, um, the, my problem with this show really is that not a whole lot of stakes leading into the next pay-per-view, and you're very close to the next pay-per-view at this point, and over-usage of people that are just not ready to be in the ring or cutting promos on a, a main show. I, I'm sorry, but it's just the way it is, in my opinion. Uh, like I said, they seem to have an utter lack of talent these days, and it really shows, and the shows really suffer for that. And when you get one or two people hurt, one or two people good people hurt, your show has immediately gone downhill. Um, the Ellsworth, Asuka, Carmella section, I couldn't stand. I couldn't care less about Becky Lynch and Peyton Royce. The Iconics are just annoying to me. Um, which is, again, that cheap, annoying heel heat. Um, they can't have a good fucking heel character, somebody who can actually perform as a heel, so they just go for the cheap, annoying shit, and I hate that. Um, so, I mean, this show, as far as I'm concerned, is a 1 out of 10. That's how I feel about it. I, I can't get this two hours back out of my life, so, uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry guys, like I know I'm being kind of hard on this lately, but like, you know, I used to love this shit growing up and like it's hard for me to even watch it nowadays. It, it just, I don't understand where it's gone, so I don't know, maybe I'm just being too hard on it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you enjoyed the review though, hit the like button, subscribe and share. My name is Kevin Jackwitz, Cage Nation, out. Mm -hmm.